Welcome back to this video lesson on the three main types of RNA. The learning goals are 1. Recognize the role of mRNA in protein synthesis. 2. Compare and contrast the prokaryotic and eukaryotic ribosomes. 3. Depict the catalytic role of rRNA in ribosomes. 4. Illustrate the clover leaf structure of tRNA. 5. Express how tRNA functions as an adaptive molecule and 6. Describe the two steps of amino acylation. Generally speaking, there are many different types of RNA present in our cells. However, in this video lesson, I will focus on the three main kinds of RNA molecules that perform different but cooperative functions in protein synthesis. And they are mRNA, rRNA and tRNA. Well, you already know that the chemical structure of RNA is very similar to that of DNA. Yet, the three key differences that distinguishes RNA from DNA are 1. RNA has the ribose sugar. Unlike the deoxyribose sugar in DNA, ribose in RNA has, as you know, hydroxyl group on the 2' prime carbon of the sugar. Secondly, out of the four nitrogenous bases, RNA has uracil instead of thymine. And thirdly, RNA is single-stranded. Well, let us now go over some details of them. The first one up is mRNA, which stands for messenger RNA. It constitutes about 5% of the total RNA in the cell. And most importantly, mRNA is an RNA version of the gene. This is due to the fact that mRNA carries complementary nucleotide sequence from a segment of one of the DNA strands. And the sequence of nucleotides in mRNA is the genetic code for protein synthesis. So, the genetic message of DNA is organized into a series of triplet codons in mRNA. For example, you see in this 12-lettered mRNA sequence, or an mRNA strand, the letters are to be read continuously in groups of three with no overlapping. And as a result of which, uh, this 12-lettered mRNA sequence will give rise to four codons. Now, by using the genetic code table, we can predict the amino acid sequence specified by this mRNA strand. So based on the uh, sequence of this mRNA strand, the first codon which is AUG specifies for methionine. The second codon GAG specifies for glutamate or glutamic acid. The third codon AGC is specifying for serine. While the fourth codon which is UAG in this case do not code for any amino acid but rather it is a stop codon. In short, it implies that the sequence of nucleotides in the mRNA dictates the sequence of amino acid in a polypeptide during protein synthesis. Next up is the rRNA, which stands for ribosomal RNA. It is one of the most common RNAs, making about 85% of the total RNA in the cell. RRNA is the major constituent of ribosomes. In other words, RRNA constitutes about 60% of the ribosomes and the other 40% of the ribosome are the proteins. You know, ribosomes are one of the key players in protein synthesis. They are the actual sites in the cytoplasm where protein synthesis take place. Despite their similar functions, Ribosomes in prokaryotic and eukaryotic uh, organisms differ in their size. Prokaryotic ribosome is 70S and eukaryotic ribosome is 80S. S here stands for sweat bulk unit which is a measure of sedimentation rate. And on the whole, 80S eukaryotic ribosome is going to be sedimenting faster than the 70S prokaryotic ribosome because 80S is a little heavier than 70S. Generally, 
Each ribosome in all cells consists of two unequal subunits and they are referred to as a large subunit and a small subunit. For example, the prokaryotic 70S ribosome is composed of the large 50S subunit and a small 30S subunit. Furthermore, if you look into the rRNAs and the number of proteins in these two subunits, you can clearly see the differences. The larger 50S subunit is consisting of 23S rRNA, which is actually 2,900 nucleotides long, and it also have 5S RNA, which is 120 nucleotides long, along with 31 sets of proteins. The 30S smaller subunit, on the other hand, is consisting of 16S rRNA, which is 1,540 nucleotides long, along with 21 sets of proteins. And for this reason, these two subunits are unequal in size. In the same way, eukaryotic ATS ribosome is consisting of a larger 60S subunit and a smaller 40S subunit. Here too, you can see the differences in the lens of rRNAs and the number of proteins. Larger 60S subunit is made up of 28S rRNA, which is 4700 nucleotides long. And it also has 5.8S RNA, which is 160 nucleotides long, and 5S RNA, which is 120 nucleotides long, along with 50 sets of proteins. The smaller 40S subunit contains only 18S rRNA, which is 1,900 nucleotides long, along with 33 sets of proteins. So such differences in the length of rRNAs and the number of proteins are responsible for the unequal size of ribosomal subunits and the overall difference in the prokaryotic and the eukaryotic ribosome. Nonetheless, the two ribosomal subunits combine together to form a whole ribosome during protein synthesis. The smaller ribosomal subunit have one mRNA binding site while the larger subunit has three tRNA binding sites called as A site, P site and E site. And this is how ribosome interacts with mRNA and tRNA to synthesize proteins. Additionally, rRNAs in the ribosome has a catalytic or enzymatic role during protein synthesis. rRNA in the larger ribosomal subunit has an enzyme called peptidyl transferase that catalyzes peptide bond formation during protein synthesis. Now, what do we mean by a peptide bond? Well, peptide bond refers to the amide bond between two amino acids formed by joining the carboxyl group of one amino acid with the amino group of another amino acid by elimination of a water molecule. And such a peptide bond is catalyzed by the enzyme peptidyl transferase or the rRNA which is located in the larger ribosomal subunit. And technically speaking, such rRNAs that acts as enzymes are called as ribozymes. The third and the last type of RNA involved in protein synthesis are the tRNA, which stands for transfer RNA. It constitutes about 15% of the total RNA. And basically, tRNA is a short single-stranded RNA molecule made up of only about 76 to 90 nucleotides. And they are involved in the transportation of amino acids to the ribosome during protein synthesis. tRNAs actually have two binding sites for two different molecules. That is, it has an mRNA binding site and an amino acid binding site. And for this reason, tRNA can function as an adapter molecule by forming a link between the amino acids and the mRNA. Here is the secondary structure of tRNA, which was first proposed by an American biochemist named Robert Hawley in 1968. Robert Hawley, in fact, shared the Nobel Prize in 1968 with Marshall Nirenberg and Hargobind Kurana for this contribution. 
since the secondary structure of tRNA has a resemblance to the clover leaf, Robert Hawley proposed the secondary structure of tRNA as the clover leaf model. In this clover leaf secondary structure of tRNA, it is uh, mainly comprising of four stems and three loops. The four stems are the double-stranded regions which are formed by hydrogen bonding between complementary base pairs when the tRNA molecule folds up and the three loops are the single-stranded regions. Of these three loops, you need to know the anticodon loop which is at the bottom of the clover leaf. And this loop is important as it contains three nucleotides called as anticodon. It is the anticodon of the tRNA that base pairs with the codon of the mRNA. For instance, a codon AUG on the mRNA binds to an anticodon UAC in the tRNA. So AUG complements with UAC. Or in other way around, UAC complements with the codon AUG. Similarly, if the codon is UGG, then can you predict the anticodon in the tRNA? Right, it will be ACC. Now let's do one last practice. If the codon is CCA, then what about the anticodon? Exactly, it will be GGU. From this, we realize that the anticodon forms the mRNA binding site in the tRNA. Now, the next question is, where do we have the amino acid binding site? For this, let's look at the clover leaf structure once again. So, at the opposite end of the anticodon loop lies the amino acid acceptor stem or the 3' prime end of uh, the tRNA. So basically, it is the 3' prime end of the tRNA, which is the amino acid binding site, or it's also called as amino acid acceptor stem. And a fact that you want to remember is that the 3' prime end of all tRNAs ends with CCA sequence. And it is the 3' prime uh, end or the 3' prime hydroxyl group of the last adenine nucleotide that attaches to the amino acid. And such a process of adding amino acid to the 3' prime end of a tRNA is called as charging of tRNA or it's technically called as amino acylation. And I'll come back to this process in a minute. So the secondary clover leaf tRNA structure can further fold into a more stable tertiary structure. And such a tertiary structure of tRNA appears like an inverted L letter. It also has an anticodon loop on one end of the L and an amino acid uh, acceptor stem on the other end. So tRNA commonly exists in this tertiary form. Well, we are back to the process of amino acylation. As I said before, it's a process of adding amino acid to the 3' prime end of a tRNA. And the reaction is catalyzed by an enzyme called amino acyl tRNA synthetase. The process is completed in two steps that includes activation of amino acid and charging or loading of tRNA. In the first step, which is activation of amino acid, the enzyme amino acyl tRNA synthetase binds with an amino acid and an ATP molecule to form an activated amino acyl AMP. The step can be expressed in a chemical equation where the enzyme binds with an amino acid and an ATP molecule and yields an activated amino acid called as amino acyl AMP and releases two inorganic phosphates from the ATP. So this is the first step called as activation of amino uh, acid or basically it is the formation of amino acid AMP. In the next second step which is known as charging or loading, there is the transfer of the enzyme then transfers the activated amino acid to the 3' end of the tRNA. 
So, if we express this step again in uh, the form of a chemical equation, so the enzyme now with, uh, by using this AMP, the energy molecule, it now transfers the activated amino acid over to the 3' prime end of the tRNA and yields uh, an amino acid tRNA or a tRNA containing an amino acid and releases the AMP. So, in this way, uh, we have the uh, completion or we have the amino acylation of uh, tRNA. And you can be noting that there are 20 different amino acid tRNA synthetases for each amino acid so as to link the right amino acid to the right tRNA. Putting all the three RNAs together, we can now summarize that an mRNA encodes amino acid sequence of a polypeptide. A tRNA brings amino acids to ribosome during translation or during protein synthesis. And an rRNA associates with a set of proteins to form ribosomes which are the molecular machinery for protein synthesis. And in my next lesson, we will learn how these three key components work together during protein synthesis.